Greetings, fellow YouTube geeks. My name is Justin, and this is the third installment in a series of videos describing basic Oracle database administration. Now, in video one, we discussed the general architecture of Oracle, discussed all of its components at a very high level, and talked about how all these components tied in to, co to collectively make the Oracle database server. We also talked about what a database was and how all the and, and theories and how all that ties in. In video, in video number two, we discussed downloading the Oracle database software from the Oracle Corporation and installing it. If you remember, we installed it on my laptop, which is this system, which is a Microsoft Windows Vista operating system running on an IBM ThinkPad. Okay, so it's a PC. So after the database software is installed, what you want to do is I open up a DOS window and move to the location. Oops, sorry. I move to a lo the location where I installed my Oracle database software and this is called the Oracle home note you can install the Oracle database software anywhere on the system you like okay now see I installed it in C colon slash Oracle slash app slash product slash 1110 slash DB1 if I do a DIR a directory listed on that directory I will see all the files and subdirectories that are installed as part of the Oracle data uh, as the base Oracle database software installation. Okay, this is these are all the, the the subdirectories and files that the Oracle database software needs to operate. Now, the first thing we need to do to create a database is we need to create a parameter file. And by default, all parameter files must exist in Oracle Home, which is this which is this these group of directories right here. Okay, slash database. So all so all parameter files for a database must exist in the database directory under Oracle Home. Okay, so that being the case, we're going to use the DOS Edit program, which is kind of like Notepad you can use, or WordPad. You can use any editor you want in Windows, and Edit comes with Windows free by default. And we're going to create a database called Finance. Now, this file must be named this. And this naming convention, or Oracle will never find it. And it also, not only must be named in a certain naming convention, but it must reside in this directory under your Oracle home. Okay, so remember, Oracle app product 1110db underscore one on my particular system is Oracle home. Okay, and database is a subdirectory under Oracle home where your initialization file for Oracle must reside. And it must be called init, which is short for initialization the name of the database dot aura short for oracle and the dot ora file extension is a standard which just which just uh, tells um, or which just which just lets you know that it's an oracle configuration file now this uh, a standard naming another standard naming convention is that your oracle database name should be limited to eight characters so one two three four five six seven the word finance have set has seven characters in it so he's a valid database name. Now this database, because of the name Finance, will probably is. So we're going to imagine this is just a scenario that we have a hypothetical company called Company ABC. Company ABC needs a database to track their general ledger, their accounts receivable, their accounts payable, their um, their taxes, their, their donations, their payroll, their pension plans for their employees, everything. Okay profits, expenses, everything. So this Oracle database will track that. So we're going to create a file called in our Oracle Home database directory called initfinance.ora. Now, this file can have hundreds upon hundreds, not thousands, but hundreds of parameters. And these parameters control settings such as for Oracle database tune-in, uh, what features are enabled or disabled in an Oracle database and other things. There are there are two ma there are two major classifications for um, parameters in Oracle: documented parameters and undocumented parameters. We won't get into that in in, in in anytime soon or any of the upcoming subsequent videos anytime soon. That's more of an advanced topic. But basically, the only t a typical production database for any company is going to have dozens, if not hundreds, of parameters in this file anyway. But to start off on our basic database, just how to create it, just note that the only parameter that's required from Oracle as a minimum is db underscore name. Okay, and we call it finance. 
Now, there's another parameter I'm going to put in here, but don't really worry about what this means yet. Okay, we'll get into this in a few presentations. Okay, data, database or data finance control files are one, DB name finance. Okay, good. So now I'm going to save the file and exit. And if we DIR, we'll see that this file, that the edit program created this file for us. And if we use the type command, which basically displays the contents of the initfinance.or file, the, the type command displays the contents of a file, we see that our changes took and saved. So we're good. Actually, in case you guys haven't called it, I made a typo. I didn't match it. It should be double quotes at the end, too. Even the best make mistakes once in a while, kids. Just remember that. So type in it. Finance Aura. And there it is. Okay. So now, what we need to do before we move forward with creating our database, what we need to do is we need to set two things. We need to do, two, we need to do, actually, we need, yeah, we need to do, do, we need to set two variables. Now, if you remember from middle school math, math, okay, algebra, variables basically stand for something else. They have a value. So in, in math algebra, x would equal 2 or y would equal 3 or whatever, okay? That's not the case. Uh, I'm sorry, that is the case also in computer science, okay? Um, programming languages use variables and operating systems, even Windows uses, uses variables. So what we're going to do is... We're going to set two Oracle specific variables. The first one is Oracle SID, and that stands for Oracle System Identifier, which basically means the name of the database or identifier of the database, if you will. Finance is so it's setting the value of the SID to be the name of the database. And we can view the contents of the Oracle underscore SID variable. I type it in the following command, and there it is. So if I type in so if I type in an echo percent sign the name, the name of the variable Oracle underscore SID percent sign, we get the value of the variable Oracle SID, which is finance. Now we need to set another uh, variable as well called Oracle Home. Now this isn't that important in a Windows environment. It's more because remember how I said in the other videos that um, Oracle saw the Oracle database software can install on a number of platforms. It can install on Oracle and it can even install on the mainframe. Okay, I mean, I'm sorry, I can install on Unix and Linux systems or even the mainframe. Okay, but so that's where this variable is really, really important. But we're going to set it anyway in the Windows world. And basically, the Oracle Home is what it is, the Oracle Home, where you installed your Oracle software. And if we take a look at our Oracle Home, the value of it, we see the value of it is Oracle App Product one one eleven one zero db one which is our Oracle home so our two required Oracle SID and the Oracle home variables are set you'll notice what you'll see why that's important in a few seconds here okay now the next thing we need to do is we need to create an, uh, a Windows service for this Oracle database every Oracle database must have a, a Windows service associated with it okay how we do that is with an Oracle supplied command it comes with an Oracle software called or dim then we then we then we do new SID finance. Now what this is what this is doing. Oh, I apologize. That's how you delete it. <laughs> um, I already had it created. Okay. So what this is doing is it's creating the service finance instance started and it's starting it automatically for us. So how you would stop it is you would type in Oracle stop, net stop, Oracle service finance. And how you would start it again would be Oracle service finance. See? Stop, start it. Now, what you could also do is you could go into control panel, administrative tools, services, or you could just type in services.msc from your DOS prompt. And what that does is, it brings up this window here, which are services. Now remember, services is not an Oracle-specific thing. It's a Windows thing. Okay? So there's a lot of things outside of Oracle that have their own service. 
And service is basically just a process that runs in the background and allows the program to have access to system resources. So if we take a look here, we're looking for Oracle Service Finance. There it is. It started. Okay. So what we can do is we can also stop and start it from the services window. We can right click, stop. Now it's not running. Or we could right click, start. Now it's running. Now, notice the manual here. The manual basically is saying that upon all subsequent system reboots, okay, window uh, of your laptop or whatever, or Windows Server, which are installed, you know, the Windows Server operating systems, which are addition of Windows offered by Microsoft corporations that run these databases and companies. Um, this basically will say if it's set to automatic, which it's not now, but if it was, it would mean that the Oracle database service would be started automatically on system reboot. Manual means if we rebooted it, it wouldn't start and we'd have to manually start it. To change that, you right click on the service, you go to properties, and you would pull down the startup type window here and you would select automatic. Okay? But I typically have it as manual. And when I when I right clicked and did stop, under the covers it basically issued the net stop command. And when I right clicked and did net start, it typically, under the covers, it did the net start command. All right, so all that is done. We have our, we have our Oracle database software installed. We have our parameter set with a minimum parameter that it needs. Which is db underscore name finance and control files here. And this, don't worry about this. We'll talk about this a little later. Now, and we have our two variable set, our Oracle SID and our Oracle Home. Now, if you go back to your Oracle Home and you see to a subdirectory called bin, you will see that there's a lot of e uh, files with the .exe extension in this directory. exe, 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 there's another one, exe, exe, you know, and here's some up over here too. Okay, exes are basically, for the most cases, are compiled C programs, programs written in the C language which mean programming language, which means that what's contained in, in EXE files, you can't open a notepad and read. They're not human readable. They're um, computer, machine readable. Okay, it, it's code that your processor can read, and that's what makes a program an executable. Okay, um, the CPU processor on, on many Windows type systems and laptops are Intel based. So they all can, so these EXE files um, contain instructions uh, for the uh, Intel instructions, so your Intel processor can um, interpret them and, and it knows what to do. It reads them and those instructions tell it what to do. So, one program, and this is not just for Oracle, it's anything. If you play a game or download something or even go in a notepad on Windows when you go start accessories, start programs, accessories, notepads, that's an EXE, okay, with code in it. So, if we look at, there's a command called sqlplus.exe, all right? which means it's an executable. SQL Plus is an Oracle-specific utility which is shipped with the Oracle database software. This command, this utility is used by users such as myself to connect to an Oracle database and, and perform certain maintenance activities and just, just interact with the Oracle database. Ask for data, perhaps. Put data in the database. Manage the database. Whatever I want, want to do. That's what, SQL, that's what the SQL Plus executable does. Okay, so to log in SQL Plus, what we do is the following. We type in SQL Plus slash as this DBA. Okay, and it's going to say connected to an idle instance. Why does it say